Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, primate of the Anglican Communion in Nigeria asked government not to let down its guard in the war against terrorism, says insurgents are not ready to give in. Defense chief insists army remains unrelenting in counterinsurgency war, says operations are still ongoing to clear terrorists from Sambisa Forest. Gunmen kidnapped former Foreign Affairs Minister Bagul Hirse in Kaduna. The Syrian government rejects United Nations proposal of opposition rule in eastern Aleppo when rebels withdraw. We begin tonight with encouraging words from the Anglican primate, Most Reverend Nicola Soko, to government forces saying that the war against insurgency, and in particular the terrorist group Boko Haram, is far from over. The primate who is speaking to journalists in Abuja said that the recent wave of attacks by terrorists is an indication that the government cannot let down its guard just yet in the fight against terror. Reverend Oko says that the government should also put in place measures to ensure the safety of those who are returning to their homes after being displaced by the insurgents. You know, when this thing started, I did say that war against insurgency is not a hundred meters dash. It's a marathon race. So the country must be prepared. Nobody should. That's why when they put a date and say December or so and so, I was not very enthusiastic because from experience we know that terrorists are not people who will submit so easily. Look at the way they are releasing the Chibok guests. That will give you an indication that they are not ready to submit. If they are ready to submit, why did they not release the guests at once? They want to use the guests to continue to negotiate, to continue to bargain, either for money or for, for whatever, or for their own people. The people who are really in danger now are those who have returned to their villages. The, 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 the displaced persons who have returned to their villages. We cannot be sure that Boko Haram will not emerge from here and there and attack them again. So the government must continue to emphasize there should be no relaxation, there should be no relenting. The military must continue to do their very best to protect the people who have returned to the villages because Boko Haram is a battle that we don't know when it will end. Meanwhile, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Gabriel Lonishaki, has said that the army is not relenting in its counter-insurgency war. Lonishaki, who is on operation, an operational visit to the Theatre Command and headquarters of the Operation Latvia Doli in Medjugorje, says that operations are ongoing in the notorious Sambisa forest to clear the insurgents. The Chief of Defence Staff told journalists in Medjugorje that even though the Operation Safe Corridor initiative is open for repentant insurgents to surrender, it will not in any way suspend operations. The Chief of Defence Staff was being inspecting, uh, had been, has been inspecting vehicles reconfigured by the military technicians in the 7th Division to give a boost to the counterinsurgency operations. Meanwhile, terrorists may have been successfully dislodged from Madagali and other towns around Medjugorje, but the challenge facing returnees now is inadequate food supply. Since these areas were liberated by the military, there has been a huge shortage of food because the residents are afraid of returning to their farms. The chairman of Madagali local government area, however, offered assurances of a better future for the displaced persons. Madagali, one of the major towns rescued from Boko Haram in Adamawa state. The displaced persons here are back to their ancestral homes, but they have a new challenge, finding food to eat. The residents here are predominantly farmers, but most of them are afraid to return to their farms. Mr. Belo Samda is the district head of Madagali, and he says the people here need a lot of encouragement from government 
in order to survive. Both the local government and the government at the state level, we are going to try to uh, get our people to get engaged in agriculture. The state government, for instance, is uh, going to implement a special intervention in the local government area. Where in this local government area and other local government areas that have been uh, uh, invaded by the insurgents, um, where we will buy agricultural inputs, uh, different kinds of agricultural inputs, and also provide mechanization services so that people can start uh, trying to recover their livelihoods. <laughs> Although help is coming from a few donors, many of the displaced persons believe that they urgently need security in order to return to their farms. We are solemnly depending on farm, but, but uh, due to this problem, if any people uh, you go to farm 15 kilometers from this mirror, it's a problem. So the little we have around we share it and it's not enough. So we are in terrible condition. We need properly support. The local authorities here are not ignoring the demands of people, but the council appears to be handicapped due to the economic recession. I want to make a clarion call to the good people of Madagascar local government, beneficiaries, to make use of the item given to you not to sell the items because selling it will bring more hunger. I urge you to make use of this, of it, and also to pray and support leader at all levels for betterment of all. Donation of food items will no doubt help these displaced persons resettle, but for them to consolidate fast, it's important that their demand of improved security is looked into by authorities to enable them return to their normal lives as fast as possible. In the meantime, over 100,000 internally displaced persons from Hertzman attacks in the 12 local council areas of Benue State have asked President Muhammad Buhari to raise a military task force to protect local farmers from another invasion ahead of this year's dry season grazing. Representatives of the IDPs and the Catholic priest, Reverend Father Solomon Ukeima, who was also displaced three times by the herdsmen, made a call at the commissioning of the UNHCR Guma Shelter Project for 100 families displaced between 2012 and 2015. Women and children are the most vulnerable groups in cases of displacement. Here, most are looking bewildered in their new accommodation at Guma, shelter homes provided by the Office of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. The UNHCR believes that the only way these displaced people in Benue State can feel protected is by sheltering them. These 100 units apartments built by the UNHCR contains a room and a parlor and it's for the IDPs who now reside here in Guma Benue State. This state was hit by the challenge of internal displacement due to the internal, I mean the intercommunal clashes, the so-called um, clashes between herdsmen and farmers. There were casualties, they were displaced, they were wounded persons, and so we thought as this state was facing those challenges, the UN and specifically the UN High Commissioner for Refugees had no option but to stand in solidarity. It's a colorful event to commission this project, spiced with entertainment and dancing. For the government, beyond settling these farmers, the federal government must take a fresh look at attacks carried out by suspected herdsmen. I wish to stress, based on facts and figures from the International Office of the Migration Data, Benue is the worst hit besides the northeastern states of Nigeria. Even in the northeastern states, the agenda was different from the agenda in Benue. These attackers 
and we discovered from intelligence report that quite a good number of them were from outside Nigeria. They were not Nigerians. And they came here with an agenda. The agenda was to attack, displace the people, and occupy. In the northeast, we didn't witness that. Before the commissioning and handing over ceremony, some of the IDPs appealed to the federal government to help restore peace so they can return home. If the president, my president, whom I voted because I anticipated change, can put together a task force for cattle rustling, then something must be done about human lives. And this center open. For these IDPs, things appear to be looking up for them. But this whole effort can only make sense if security is provided to prevent future attacks by suspected herdsmen. More stories now. The Niger State Police Command is deploying additional 500 policemen to areas prone to attacks by cattle rustlers, especially in the Shiroro communities. This is coming on the heels of a spate of attacks that have so far left 11 people dead and many more wounded. The Commissioner of Police says that the bandits were fleeing a military offensive in Zamfara State and are taking refuge in forests bordering Kaduna and Zamfara States. A former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Baguru Hirsay, has been abducted by gunmen suspected to be kidnappers in Kaduna State, northwest of Nigeria. The former minister was said to have been abducted by gunmen when he visited President Muhammad Buhari's nephew, Al Haji Mamman Daura at his Inwa Road residence in Kaduna Metropolis. According to reports, the former minister, in company of a friend, had gone to pay a condolence visit to the family of the late Sultan of Sokoto, Ibrahim Dazuki, on Kabiru Road, when three men alighted from an ash-colored Toyota Corolla car and whisked him away. Meanwhile, spokesman for the Kaduna Police Command, Ali Usman, who confirmed the incident to our correspondents, says that a team of de detectives are deployed across the state to ensure the safe and unconditional release of the former minister from his abductors. The federal government is asking the judiciary to reform the criminal justice system to make it more effective. This challenge was thrown at executive of course 38 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru, in Plateau State. The Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo told the participants that now is the time to complement the efforts of the federal government to reform the judiciary. The National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru, in Jos, north central region of Nigeria, the nation's foremost policy think tank had its graduation for participants of Senior Executive Courses 38 after a 10-month intensive research through lectures, seminars, discussions and study tours within and outside the country. President Mohamedou Buhari, as the special guest of honor in the speech presented by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, revisited the challenges of law and order, as well as the importance of having a vibrant and speedy criminal justice system. Our system of criminal justice, from investigation to prosecution and adjudication by the court, needs to be re-engineered. The long delays in the trial process has made, has impaired the credibility of our capacity to hold offenders to account. Our problem, it seems, is not access to justice. It is exiting our justice system once you have accessed it. I have charged the judiciary often, and I do so again, for the task of developing a, a firm blueprint for a justice system that works. Acting Director General of the Institute, Mr. Jonathan Juma, said he was confident that recommendations and implementation strategies contained in the report will be considered by the government. In part two, after the break, Nigerian Air Force planes bomb barges carrying illegal oil cargoes in River State. Please join us again.